What will those puppies look like? Tell me what I need to know. Okay, sure. You see, we might indeed use the term genetic lottery. However, you don't want to rely on a crystal ball here. You can be very accurate, especially if you have a good understanding of the following concept. Expression of genetic traits. That's what today's episode is all about. So let's dig into this. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. E and on this channel I share with you what I know on management of kennels and catteries. If you are new here and you want to improve your knowledge and your skills in this field, consider subscribing. And right now guys, we are on a journey, a genetic journey to be exact, because this video is part of my genetics masterclass for dog breeders. So during those short presentations, I will teach you the basics that you need to know before starting working on your breeding program. So today we are talking about the expression of genetic traits and I'm going to cover four things that you absolutely need to know here. Genetics comes with a lot of definitions, its own lingo that you need to master to fully grasp the meaning of this science. And to my point, here is an example we talked about in our previous video, phenotype and genotype. A phenotype is an individual's observable traits, such as height, eye color, blood type. The genetic contribution to the phenotype is called the genotype. Traits, simply put, are what you can observe on an individual, like the color of the coat, the height, the morphology, characteristics that you can indeed appreciate and evaluate. And that's what you focus on when you are in charge of a dog breeding program. You want to obtain them, you want to improve them, because again, this is how you will reach your why. Those traits are, to some extent, influenced by the genetic material our dogs have inside their cells. All traits are not made equal though. Time to deep dive into this concept. Your breeding selection program is all about your why. I already told you that. Well, time to put this into practice. Here's what you need to do in real life. Grab a notepad. Yes, you heard me right. Grab a notepad and a pen because I want you to do a preliminary exercise. So now, write down on this notepad I ask you to grab those traits you want to select your dogs for in your breeding program. You can pause the video while you're doing that. I'm not going anywhere, I can promise you that. Okay, now when you're done writing, I want you to take the page out of the notepad and put it next to a blank one. Because we are now going to split those traits into two categories. The ones that are said to be qualitative versus the ones that are said to be quantitative. A qualitative trait defines a quality. That means that the different phenotypes you will observe will fall into different categories. Let me give you a few examples here. Color of the coat, color of the eyes, type of coat if it's smooth, rough, curly. On the other hand, a quantitative trait is something that can be measured. In fact, anything that can be measured will fall into this category. Again, a few examples here. Eight, weight, age, Those two different types of genetic traits have what we call different types of genetic determinism. They are influenced in a different way by genetics. For the purpose of this video, we will only focus here on qualitative traits. Hey, don't you worry, I'll definitely shoot a video on the quantitative ones as well. So stay tuned to this channel if you don't want to miss it. So now, let's see how those qualitative traits are transmitted. Qualitative traits are often called monogenic because typically only one gene is involved in it. But quick question for you guys. What is a gene? Do you have a clear definition of what this is? So let's take a given chromosome inside the dog's genome. To keep it super simple, a gene is a DNA sequence that is located on a very precise location inside the genome. And we call this locus if you want to use fancy terms. A given gene is therefore located at a given position on a given chromosome. It is not moving around. It stays on this chromosome it is meant to be on in the dog. In dogs, in all mammals by the way, chromosomes always come by pairs. Which means that for one given gene in a dog, you will always have two copies of this gene. Those two copies, they can be the same or they can be different because there are indeed different versions of a gene born from mutations happening in the species. Those different versions, we call them alleles. 
That is a very important term for you guys to remember because this one, I can guarantee you, comes back all the time in discussions around genetics. An allele represents a version of a gene. And for a given gene, you can have multiple alleles. Okay, so we just covered some very important concepts here. They will come in handy for the next step, understanding the underlying mechanisms behind the expression of qualitative genetic traits. So let's take a simplified example that I always use in my lectures, the color of the coat in Labrador Retrievers. If you want to take a look at the real thing in Labradors, I really encourage you to watch this webinar we did recently on genetics in Labradors. So our gene in this example would be coat color. And in this simplified example, this gene exists in two versions, again two alleles, big B and little b. Big B means black. Little b means chocolate. So you see here we have one gene, two alleles. That means that in a dog, you have three possibilities. For this gene, a dog can be big B, big B, big B, little b, or little b, little b. One gene, two alleles, three possibilities. Those three combinations you have here. That's what we will call the genotype. And here, when you know the genotype, in qualitative genetics, you can now define the phenotype of the individual. So you see, this dog, big B, big B, its coat will be black. This one, little b, little b, will be chocolate. And what about this one, a mix of both colors? That is a very common answer I get when I give this lecture. This one, in fact, is black. It is black because the allele big B is dominant. And here we are with a new concept you guys need to be aware of, the law of dominance. You see, there is a hierarchy between alleles. Some are dominant, some are recessive. When the dominant is present, well, basically, the recessive cannot say a word. The recessive allele cannot be expressed when the dominant is present. It does not get more simple than this. In my example here, big B is dominant and little b is recessive. Anytime big B is present, the dog is black. For a dog to be chocolate, it must be little b, little b. And there's no other way around this. And believe it or not, I have more definitions to throw in here. You see here, big B, big B, little b, little b. For the genes we are interested in, color of the coat, the two alleles, those two versions of the gene the dog carries, they are the same here. When this happens, we will say that the dog is homozygous for the gene. In the case of big B, little b, for the gene of interest, the dog carries two different alleles. It is therefore said to be heterozygous for the gene. We could also say it is a black dog carrying chocolate. Heterozygous, homozygous. Again, those are big words here. And you might wonder, why you need this? The fact is, those are regularly used in genetic lectures or genetic textbooks. You want to feel more comfortable in this field? You need to know what they mean. I'm not kidding here. So in this video, we reviewed very important concepts. The final goal for you, however, is to grab those concepts and use them to reach your why you spend so much time defining. Next time, we will see how we can harvest the power of genetics. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it on your favorite social networks. Sharing is caring, that's what we content creators say. If you want to support this work, that's the simplest way to do it. And if you are not following us already, please hit this subscribe button so you won't miss any of our future videos. Have a great day, guys. We'll see each other very soon on the next video. You can be sure of that.